Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. That's my email. Reach out for purchase and pricing details of this or any Watchbox watch. Today, we're discussing one of the big reversos from the 2000s. This is the Gégère Lecoultre Grand Reverso 976, and it was launched at the SEH Ash in 2009. The watch is large, 30 millimeters across from 9 to 3, not including the crown, in stainless steel. It measures a svelte 10.3 millimeters thick and from lug tip to lug tip 48.5 millimeters with a broad 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We'll throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and get a good sense of how it fits. It is very broad. Don't think of this as a 30 millimeter watch. That's the width from 9 to 3, but it doesn't describe the fit across the wrist. And I'm going to say you want a wrist of at least 17 centimeters circumference to wear this well. My wrist is 16 centimeters, and I really do think the watch is just a little bit too big for me. So 17 centimeters circumference wrists and larger step up. This is your reverso. You can see, however, that with a sloped flank and a thin profile, if you've got that big wrist, it'll fit underneath a dress cuff. The strap is large and substantial. It's a thick cut of leather, bolstered to give it volume, black with large rectangular scale alligator leather and a matte finish. It is a brand new JLC factory strap, calfskin on the bottom. And you can see it has a broad folded side and a monotone stitch. Now the lugs here are drilled very close to the case and there's actually a little recess in the flank of the case that allows the strap to move completely unimpeded and not suffer impingement against the side of the case as it moves. So you can pull it straight down around a small wrist but the strap is massive and very stiff. The close drilled profile and the recess in the case flank also creates a hugely integrated look as it's basically impossible to see daylight between strap and case meaning it has a much more integrated aesthetic, almost as though it were a bracelet. We have a full deployant clasp, something I like to see, because these days, that is the 2020s, a lot of JLC pieces no longer include deployants in a cost-cutting exercise. It's nice to see a full double folding clasp to protect you from dropping your watch. It has pull tab spring bars, so you can pull these little tabs, pop the strap out of the lugs, and quickly and easily swap the strap. The Reverso case was first conceived in the 1920s, and initially, the only part of the watch that was Le Cult was the name on the, on the box, as it said Reverso on the front. The movement was from Tavanas, the case was from Wenger, and the design was by a subcontractor of Gégère and Le Cult at the time. Over the years, Gégère Le Cult has insourced every part of the watch, from the case to the movement to the design, and so Gégère Le Cult now now sits on the dial, but the original shape of the case from 1931 remains, with its vaulted case flanks, its engraved gadroons or strakes that wrap all the way around the case and around the flank, the rounded and squared off conical end profiles of the lugs. On the dial, we have a sort of tapestry-like curtain pattern that falls around the hours, and then a sort of a clou de Paris or a hobnail at the center. We have broad sword style hands and high polish, and this watch has a few features that are not commonly found on reversos because the presence of the caliber 976, you get two features that reversos generally don't have. One is a time zone function, so as you travel and you jump time zones, you can set that hour hand independently, and you'll note the watch keeps ticking, the minute hand is not displaced, so you can make those adjustments quickly. You also have a hacking seconds function, also uncommon on Reverso watches, so you can set it precisely to a reference time. The original Reverso was envisioned as a sports watch with the glass crystal on one side and a solid steel case back on the other side to protect the watch. The idea was that once you were done with your sports or vigorous activity, you would flip back to the dial side. Well, today this is no longer a sports watch, so JLC uses the opposite side of the case for different reasons. Secondary complications, dials, or even display case backs. Now take a quick look. You can see that the interior of the case features a overlapping perlage pattern, and on the back you can see that it goes through the 1,000 hours chronometric control and it's water resistant to 30 meters. It has a vertical satin finish, and the case back is as flat as a board. Taking a look at the movement, this is fascinating because it's actually a round movement with an automatic winding system that's been adapted roughly to the shape of a rectangular case and manual wind. So the 975 is called the Auto Tractor. It's a modern, rugged sports watch automatic movement that JLC designed for its 21st century sporting models. 
Well, this has a lot of those underlying features, including the free sprung balance and the full balance bridge for shock tolerance. Unexpected again in reverso, which generally features a more delicate form caliber. Its manual wind has a 48 hour power reserve, pivots on 19 joules, it beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour. And though it wasn't originally designed in the shape of this case, you could see that it is properly sized for this case. So there's a nice match between movement size and case size. And again, you do have the time zone function and you do have the stop seconds. We have Cote de Genève across the bridges. We have solarization on the ratchet wheel. We have both blued and polished screws and then satination on the train wheels themselves. So it's a good looking movement, a combination of manual and mechanical finish inside a gorgeous watch. Now I mentioned that 1000 hours control. Since 2004, every JLC watch except the micro movement caliber 101 has gone through the 1000 hours control and that includes reversos. 1000 hours of durability testing, power reserve testing, chronometric precision testing and water resistance testing. Introduced in the early 90s, it was one of the first in-house tests to go beyond the tolerances of the Swiss COSC chronometer tests for bare movements. So reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.